So, you want to be a Christian content creator in 2022 or 2023? Well, it's more difficult than ever and easier than ever. So don't worry, I'm going to help give you some tips for getting started and kind of what it's like to be a content creator when dealing with Christian or Catholic content. First off, I have to say it's amazing that you want to join in the, you know, some people will call it the fight. I don't like to use that sort of adversarial, uh, adversarial language, excuse me. But, you know, uh, being a Christian or Catholic voice among the social media group is not exactly popular. In fact, if you're on any form of social media right now, you'll see that uh, most popular is ex-Christians, ex-evangelicals, telling your stories of religious trauma, how it's hurt you, how it's bad, that sort of thing. So... It's kind of become a counterculture thing, so wanting to do it definitely is a blessing, and it's a good thing, but it's not going to be easy. Let me first start off by saying you're going to lose a lot of followers, and you may potentially even lose friends. Uh, this example is specifically from TikTok, where I have about 11.5 thousand followers at this uh, current moment, and when I started posting more Catholic content, let me tell you that that count started to drop drastically. I'd lose 20, 30 followers in one day. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Your, your followers should be people who engage with your content, people who are interested in your content, people who want to be a part of your community. So if they're not interested in that sort of content, they don't want to see it, then unfollowing you is probably a good thing because you don't then have all these people who don't want to view your content uh, who are then not engaging with your content, causing it to fall flat. So don't be discouraged by that. But there were people that I considered friends, that I made a lot of videos with, that I had done uh, a lot of stitches and duets and other, you know, TikTok terms like that. I did a lot of work with them. And as soon as I started making more Christian content, they immediately cut ties with me, blocked me, cut it out, bye. And it was a little bit, uh, you know, disheartening. Uh, definitely not something that I didn't expect to happen and and i understand you know if they're a business person they're saying well my business clientele is is non-christian so i don't want to associate with anymore you know it, it's business it is what it is but it still doesn't feel great so if you already have a following then make sure that you know you are going to lose parts of that following if you're starting brand new and you haven't made any content before then that's great that you don't have to worry about that but you need to worry about the next thing Ironically, the second issue you'll run into is gaining followers. So you will have people who live for trolling. They, they live to tell you that they're wrong, that you're wrong, excuse me. They live to tell you that your beliefs are wrong or that they, they so dislike what you're doing, what you're saying, that they have to tell you that you're wrong. So they'll follow you and you'll think, great, I have a follower, but they only follow you so they can join every single one of your you know, live streams, your lives, uh, wherever you go live on, any of your content you post, they will engage with but in a negative way, telling people that they're stupid, that they're wrong, to tell you every way that you're wrong, try and pick a fight, try and pick an argument, every single thing you post, they will engage with but in a negative way. And some people will tell you that this is a good thing. There are many people who will tell you, well, any engagement is good engagement, and if people are engaging even in a negative way, then that's likes, views, and comments on your video. That will then cause more people to be able to see it, and that's good for your engagement. And while that may be true to you know, help the algorithm to get your stuff seen, I don't believe that is a healthy way to grow your channel or healthy engagement. But it is your decision, so you have to make that decision. Do you allow the people who are negative to come in and constantly tell you that you're wrong, that you're dumb, and insult your, your people or the followers you do have? Or do you block them and lose that one follower in the short term, short term Excuse me, but also gain you know, a little bit of peace of mind that you don't have someone constantly trolling your chat? And I do believe the right thing to do is to ban them, block them, you know, give them a warning, or remove them. If you look at some of the largest content creators out there, almost all of them will have a hefty ban list. And this is because they know that curating their community is more important than having that one extra follower. In the long run, kicking one person to save your community or other things is going to be much more beneficial than trying to include every single person in and letting people run amok, break rules, and insult you. And you, more importantly, insult you or your fans who are watching the video and who are trying to engage with it. It's better to just remove them. It may be hard at first, you'll see your follower go count go down, but in the long run, it is worth it. 
The next hardest part of engagement is as you build your community and you get more popular or you know build a little bit of reach in the community, an expectation is that you're a part of the community, right? You can't just be a sole content creator. Usually you stitch, duet, talk with, you know, engage other people's content and show their content and you, you build yourself as a part of the community. And the Christian community especially has an issue with there's not much unity or unification. There's literally a million, probably a billion different forms of Christianity out there now, you know, between Protestants and Catholics and Baptists and Evangelicals and all the all the different subdenominations and differences here and there. And while 90% of what people may believe may be similar, people tend to focus on the, the small things that are different and that causes problems, schisms, division. And so when you're trying to be a part of the community, you'll find that part of the community doesn't want to be a part of you. And you can certainly feed into that drama. Everyone knows drama sells. If you do too much drama on TikTok or social media or Instagram or wherever, you definitely will get more views. But then you have to ask yourself, are you living up to the ideals you're trying to preach, right? Most people know that people can say whatever they want, but their actions speak louder than words. And if you're trying to be a Christian content creator and all you're doing is seeking out drama, fights, and things like that, people are going to question whether or not what you're doing is truly for God, or if you're just trying to make an audience, if you're disingenuous, or you're just trying to make money. And while we're speaking of content, we're going to move into the next kind of section and talk about the actual content that you make. Something you'll learn very quickly when you join social media and when you start becoming a content creator is there's a lot of creative people out there, and there's certainly a lot of people who are smarter than us out there. You may think that you're an expert in a field, and you'll run into 50 or 100 experts in that field who are even more of an expert than you. This is why, for example, if you've engaged with my content, I myself am Catholic, I try to avoid doing any sort of video or content on heavy doctrinal or apologistic uh, content because I by no means am the expert, right? We have, for example, Catholic Answers, who has a very large channel, who's very much more knowledgeable than me, and infinitely has more, uh, you know, supplies than me, more uh, resources than me, and more knowledge than me on the topic. So the question is, should I be out there creating that content when it's already created and already, you know, in my opinion, better than anything I can create? Quick shout out to Catholic Answers, by the way. They are amazing. If you haven't liked or followed them, definitely go find Catholic Answers. They have a lot of, well, answers, as well as a lot of great radio shows, podcasts, and wonderful hosts. So check them out. That being said, you need to find the content that is right for you. So if you think that you are an expert and can do it, then definitely try and fill into that niche. But know that there's a lot of people who are going to, again, create arguments, going to fact check you and get into those sort of spaces where you may not want to be. So before you start doing that, ask yourself, is this something that I really want to do? And people, again, on social media will tell you, find your niche, find your niche, find your niche. Well, that may not be bad advice here. Certainly there are experts on the Bible who are going to be more experts on the Bible than us. Certainly there are going to be, you know, people who are more religious than us, people who may know more than us. But there is something that they do not have, which is your experiences, what you do, and your kind of content that only you can create. So while you're figuring it out, you should ask yourself, what is it that only I can do? Or what is it that I can add to the conversation? Does it bring glory to God? And is it good? And that brings me into the last section, kind of my last topic or you know, point of advice on this is that even if you make something that is good, even if you make something that brings glory to God, even if you make something that's within your niche, that doesn't mean that it's going to do well. That doesn't mean you're going to get you know a million views. That doesn't mean you're going to get a lot of likes. And a lot of people struggle with that. They struggle with the, I want more likes. I want more views. I want more followers. I want to be popular. You know, we say, well, it's, you know, it's not for me. I, I want, I want this for God, right? I, I want to be able to share God's glory, but I need more people to be able to do that. And I think that's a very dangerous road to go down. Once you start saying, well, I'm, I'm doing this for God, so you know, I, I need more followers for God. I need more likes for God. It, it starts to really move that glory away from God and become about me, 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 and not about the initial, you know, point or or reason that you started the channel, or reason you started doing this on social media, the reason you started creating content. So beware the trap of fame, the trap of ego, the trap of glory. Keep your eyes focused on what you're trying to do this for. You're trying to do this to 
bring people to God or bring glory to God or spread Christianity or whatever it is that your original mission is, you want to keep that goal in mind and not let it get clouded by followers, not let it get clouded by you know, likes, not let it get clouded by saying, oh, well, you know, I made this video of me praying you know, I thought was a great prayer, but only 10 people saw it. So obviously this isn't good or God didn't like this. You know, be very careful of those shortcomings. Instead, we should focus on saying even if a video only gets five views or two views or even one view, we can say that is one person who saw Jesus today. That is one person who encountered God today that may not have otherwise done it unless I had created what I had created. So with all those tips in mind, now it's time to get started. It's welcome to the world of content creation. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. It is a hard journey, but also a very rewarding one. If you can, again, stay away from the shortcomings of getting sucked into the ego and the glory of it, but rather it is an amazing tool to bring people to God or have people have experiences with Jesus that may not have otherwise had that. And we're certainly always glad to have more people creating content based on the Bible or based on Christianity, based on religion, to help people understand it, to see it, to get rid of some myths and help people to understand this glorious gift that we have that all people have and help them to share into it. So I hope you have a blessed day. Of course, if you have any questions about anything here, feel free to ask them in the comments. I try and answer all comments. And if you can like and subscribe, that of course always helps the channel. Thank you so much. And once again, have a blessed day.